Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R340 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on Windows Server operating systems. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R340 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, let's hop in. Uh, so this video is going to be uh, specifically focused on Windows Server operating systems. So let's just start off with uh, showing you the different compatible versions of uh, Windows Server operating system. And I wouldn't be surprised in the future if there's a, you know, new ones that are released. So if uh, that does happen, do us a favor, drop a comment down below and uh, let people know. Uh, but here's the, uh, the current compatible versions uh, and what we'll do in this video is actually install Windows Server 2019. We're actually going to install that directly onto our R340. Um, and then uh, the other important note is that we're going to uh, download an ISO file and we'll put a link in the description for that. So let's get going. Hey guys, this has been with Cloud Ninjas, and today I want to be showing you guys how to install Windows Server. Um, specifically in this video, we're going to be installing Windows Server 2019. Uh, the steps are very, very similar depending on whether you're installing uh, Windows Server 2016, 2022, or maybe even just an older version of Windows. The steps are going to be very similar. So you can take the steps in this video and be able to apply that to um, newer or older versions of Windows Server. Uh, but like I said, specifically we're doing Windows Server 2019 um, and we're going to install it locally on our server. It's going to be a pretty simple video overall. It may take a little bit of time to go through the actual installation, but the steps themselves are very simple. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go down to the description and click on the link below so you can go ahead and get to this page right here. This is where we're going to be able to download the Windows Server 2019 ISO file. And that's the file we're going to put on our server so we can actually start the installation. So once you go to this page right here, you want to go ahead and click the ISO download for the 64-bit edition for English. And once we do that, this is going to start the actual uh, download of the ISO file. Um, this download may take a little bit of time, so we're just going to go ahead and fast forward through that. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and continue. Alrighty, so once that is done, we want to go ahead and place a empty USB drive into our computer. Once you've inserted that USB, we can go ahead and move our ISO file to the USB drive. So we're going to go to our Fire Explorer and move the ISO file over. And it's going to go ahead and copy everything over. Um, so this might take a little bit of time just depending on how fast your drives are. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward to this as well. All right, so now since we've downloaded the Windows Server ISO file, we wanna go ahead and enter into Boot Manager by pressing F11 on post. And once we're in the Boot Manager, we wanna to go to OneShot UEFI Boot Manager. And then we want to go ahead and select the USB drive that's containing our ISO file. And this is gonna go ahead and boot us into the Windows Server installation. It may take a little bit of time to boot into the actual installation, so we'll go ahead and fast forward. Once we've booted into the installation, it'll add, ask us to choose a language, so we're gonna go ahead and just keep it at English, and then we'll go ahead and click on Next, and then we wanna go ahead and click on Install Now. Once that has fully loaded, it'll go ahead and ask us for which operating system we want to go ahead to install. So we have the standard evaluation, standard evaluation desktop experience, data center evaluation, and data center evaluation desktop experience. So we are going to go ahead and select the standard evaluation desktop experience. We wanna go ahead and look at these license terms and go ahead and accept them and then click on next. And then we want to do a custom installation. If we're doing an upgrade, this is what we would do if we already had a, um, a version of Windows already installed. Um, but we wanna go ahead and do the custom install since we're doing a fresh installation. Now we wanna go ahead and select the installation destination. So we have a hard drive installed. So we're gonna go ahead and install our operating system onto that hard drive. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and just click on next. And this is actually gonna start putting those files onto the drive. 
Um, so it's gonna start downloading and copying all of those files and get them ready for the installation. And then once this finishes up, the operating system will go ahead and install. So again, we can just go ahead and fast forward this. This might take a little bit of time, so just sit back and relax, um, and then come back once this is done, and then we will go ahead and show you the rest of the steps. Alrighty, so all the files have been copied, so it is finishing up right now. And what's going to happen is that our server is gonna go ahead and reboot, and then it's gonna actually reboot into Windows Server. So once it's rebooted, as you can see, it has booted into Windows. And then once we've booted into Windows, we need to go ahead and set the administrator password. So this password can be anything you want it to be. Um, I would just recommend make sure that it is something that is secure. But once you go ahead and enter in the password you would like for the administrator account, you can go ahead and finish. And then this will bring you to the Windows Server lock screen. So if you press Control, Alt, Delete, and then we can type in that password we just created. This will go ahead and log us into the Windows Server operating system. So as you can see, these steps were not too difficult. If you go ahead and just follow all the steps we went over in this video, you will be in perfect shape and you will be able to install Windows Server onto your own server. So that's how you do it. If you found this video useful, go ahead and leave a like and smash that subscribe. And if you're interested in purchasing or custom building a server uh, for your home lab or data center, whether it's Dell, HP, Supermicro, or you're looking for some AMD Epics, AMD Ryzen's, Intel Scalables, we do custom build servers, so go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That is sales at cloudninjas.com. Thanks for stopping by.